Hello friends, uh, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. So today we'll be looking on to the last topic of the third chapter, that's that is uh, static techniques. Uh, and the last topic of this chapter is 3.3. In the previous tutorials, we have already covered 3.1, that is static techniques and the process, the review process, the types of process, reviews, and so on. So finally, we come to the third topic and the last topic of this chapter. In case you miss anything, do uh, visit the previous uh, tutorials and watch them to understand the final thing to be implemented as a part of this chapter. So quickly moving into the next one and the last topic of this chapter, static analysis by tools. Uh, when you talk about static analysis, of course, static analysis is about, you know, obviously doing static testing on certain things which are limited to uh, evaluation but not execution. So we do not have any kind of uh, static execution or any kind of uh, execution of the application or code being involved as a part of static testing. So there are also certain tools in the market which can help you to do static analysis instead of doing it manually. But we are not talking about the documentation which we prepare as a part of requirement or, you know, like writing SRS, FRS, BRS and all. We are talking about certain things like UML diagram. We're talking about flowcharts, control flow diagrams, or maybe a a particular program itself, the codes and so on. And we try to do it with the help of tools because uh, certain defects are not so easily found when you do deal with it in manual way, interacting like word by word. It might be time consuming, effortless, you know, involving a lot of your project execution time. So we do involve certain tools. As per ISTQB, ISTQB does not recommend any specific tool name. So in Though even I'm not going to use any kind of tool names to uh, create a diversion in your preparation because you are following my tutorial, then it becomes a challenge in case I use a name of the tool, then you may tend to follow the same name. You, I'm imagining that the ISTQB recommends that tool. So I'm not going to take the name of any tools here, but I'm just making you understand that what the tools can help you with and... Uh, what exactly the tools are. So even simple a compiler can be called as a static analysis tool. And these are the tools which are specifically meant for developers because it is limited to the codes evaluation or workflow evaluations or control flow diagrams. So these are the things which we deal with when you talk about the static analysis by tools. So before we get into anything else, the very first thing to understand as a part of this topic is the value of static analysis, like what is the significance or what importance does it carry when we conduct static analysis and, uh, you know, how it can be, you know, helpful when talking about executing them with help of tools or something and just to be conducted, how does it help you? So putting it all together at the end of this topic is uh, it does help you with early detection of defects prior to test execution. So we have been talking about these things when you talk about uh, the reviews. So obviously it helps you determine some of the defects at an early stage. Early warning about the suspicious aspects of the code or design. So suspicious aspects in the sense like, uh, you know, we talk about infinite loop, undeclared variables, and undefined variables which are not being used in the program at all. So that might create a memory leak when it comes to uh, performance and other things. So we just make sure that these other things are detected well before the practical of the code is being executed. Identification of defects not easily found by dynamic testing. So that's a big point team. When you talk about dynamic testing, obviously we have only one objective is to find defects. But there are certain areas, for example, if you talk about testing a login page and your username is having a defect, you report to the developer, it's not mandatory that the defect is lying in the login page. You do understand that defects are possibly could be in any different area, but uh, the defect are being displayed as a part of login page. So for a developer, it becomes a challenge to finally find out what was the main reason for that defect, which was being, you know, uh, shown up or uh, being displayed as a part of login page. That's where we call it as the root cause analysis, which is being performed as a part of uh, you know debugging, where it basically helps you to find out that what was the root cause for that defect. It's not mandatory that username has a 
particular defect or user name has any kind of disability about the functional features but it might be something like which is related to the database it might be related to the network availability it might be related to the registration page because of which a user is not able to log in after registration so there are things which we talk about like it's not easy to find out such things with help of dynamic testing but yes obviously uh, the uh, identification of defects can be easy when uh, you conducting static testing. So that's where we say this point. Detecting dependencies and inconsistencies in the software models such as links. So when you talk about the dependencies between different modules, when you talk about the business model diagrams, UML diagrams, or control flow diagrams, it's, it's become sometimes difficult to find out the dependencies and all manually. So static analysis would help you to minimize your efforts and find them quite simply and easy way. Improved maintainability of the code and design. Obviously, if you're managing them in the uh, some kind of application or tool, the tool basically uh, captures all the information and traceability becomes easy for you or moving to a particular step becomes simple and easy for you. So that's where we say improved maintainability of the code and design. Prevention of defects, obviously, if the lessons are learned during this process, then you can also prevent the defects from being introduced into the code and design. So these are some of the uh, values of static analysis, or to a certain extent, I can also say these are the importance why we conduct static analysis. And also to uh, some point, we can say that it is also the benefits of conducting static analysis by tools. But this is not what we are limited to. We also would like to understand how the third point, which we discussed in the previous slide, where you can see here, identification of defects are not easily found by dynamic testing. So what kind of defects are those which can be easily found by static analysis when compared to dynamic analysis? So this is where we come to this topic and we see that typical defects which can be discovered by static analysis compared to dynamic analysis. So here is the list of some of the defects or maybe I can say most of them and you can still add more to it and uh, it's just straightforward thing. Referencing a variable with an undefined value, inconsistent interfaces between modules and components, variables that are not used or are improperly declared, unreachable dead code or unreachable code or you can call it as either dead code, missing and erroneous logic, infinite loop is one of the example, overly complicated constructs, programming standards violations, security vulnerabilities, and syntax violation of code and software models. So if you see, these are some of the typical defects, which is difficult uh, when you talk about conducting dynamic testing. So it, will, it these defects are only dealt when we come to root cause analysis or debugging of the script or the code. But obviously, if a static analysis is conducted you know, with help of tool, these are the defects which are quite typically found and cannot be dealt manually by, you know, uh, doing it yourself. So, and these are the common reasons why we have defects. So putting it just together is we have tried to uh, put all the defects together here just to make or uh, create an understanding that what are the typical defects which can be found by static analysis and would be difficult when it comes to dynamic testing, reported back and root cause analysis done. So we actually invest a lot of time and cost through the, the project. So if static analysis are conducted at an early stage, then it obviously minimizes your efforts at the later stages. And we always say that principle where a cost of fixing the defect is, you know, higher when compared to earlier versions or earlier stages of the development model. So the cost of fixing a defect basically increases as the product moves towards the live use. So as early as you can find it, it is cheaper to fix than it, when it is found later. So that's where we talk about the importance of static analysis by tools and typical defects discovered by the static analysis and it will be easier to find during static analysis compared to dynamic analysis. So finally, that's where we complete our chapter three and we have almost covered all the topic as per the syllabus, uh, you know, putting it all together. So we'll be just having one more tutorial coming up right after this, that is the sample questions discussion from the static analysis or static testing techniques. So stay tuned for more videos. Uh
till then uh, for, you know thanks for watching and beyond this obviously we'll be having the chapter 4 which will be coming up so stay tuned for that this is all for now we have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial so stay tuned for more videos do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos and in case you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this right after this so uh, stay tuned and uh, till then enjoy learning happy learning take care